Monday night in Israel, Tuesday morning in Melbourne, and I think it's the afternoon. No, it's early yeah. evening in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Whoa, are we global? Good evening, good morning, good uh, good evening, um, Rachel and, and Rose. I'm Dr. Tova Goldfein. This is TMS Roundtable Global. We are live every Monday night, and we are here with amazing guests, brave people. I call them my heroes. And um, Rose will introduce our guest tonight. Hi, Rose, down there. Good morning, world. <laughs> good morning, Tova. Good morning, Rachel. Now, <laughs> this morning, we have, or today, should I say, we've got an amazing lady who has volunteered to come and speak to you all. Now, mostly we have clinicians or people who have um, coaches, etc. but this time we have got someone who has had chronic headaches for a long time, and she is going to share her story with us. And I think that you, if you see this, as someone who's actually just coming to share rather than tell us a way of treatment, put it that way. And she's going to, as we spoke to her earlier on, she's going to sort of speak about the fact that she, you know, she she rearranged her thought pattern and she rearranged how she saw the world. And within that, she was able to recover from her headaches. Now, this lady ladies and gentlemen, is a Fulbright Scholar. So we're looking at a very knowledgeable lady and her Fulbright Scholarship allowed her to go to Mexico and mm -hmm. actually become a, 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 a virtually a native speaker. Spain. So, uh, Spain. Welcome, Rachel. That's, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the Fulbright was in Mexico City, but now mm -hmm. I live in Barcelona. Oh, good memory, Rose. Rose, you're <laughs> on the ball. On the ball. Um, and I'm originally from Chicago. So, um, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, tonight is in Barcelona. It's evening time. Um, do you want me to start by talking about of myself? Of course. Tell us all about yourself. You've already okay. started telling us what you're from originally from Chicago. So yeah. now, do you, just, you really you want to hear about me? Do you really want to hear about me or Rose? Come on. I do. Sure. But okay, I'll go ahead. Um, so I had uh, chronic migraines for more than twenty years. Um, I they became chronic when I started my first year teaching in um, it was in a high school in the suburbs of Chicago. Um, I then taught 11 years in a junior high in Chicago and um, just they progressively got worse and worse and became a daily fight of battling with medications and um, and then 10 and a half years ago, I decided to move to Barcelona and um, still teach because that's what I love to do, but not in a school setting anymore. So that's been very kind of liberating to be able to choose my own students, my own classes and um, teach. Uh, well, now almost all of them are online, but also some uh, in person and um, unfortunately, the migraines didn't really change. What changed was in uh, Spain having access to the medication that usually stopped the pain, but I didn't have a doctor prescribing that. So I was able to get as much as I needed to just make it through the day. That's all that my focus was, was just living for today and not in the good, healthy way that people do that. Um, it was just kind of surviving, definitely not living, but just surviving. And um, eventually I uh, went, I, I did research, found the best uh, migraine specialist in Barcelona and, or you know, anywhere around here. She's probably one of the best in the world, but still long-term couldn't help me. But short-term, she seemed amazing. Right. And, um, yeah, so she um, was like, you cannot be taking as much medication as you're taking. You're going to give yourself a heart attack. Um, I was taking up to four pills a day. Just every time the pain started, wow. I would take a trip tan. And uh, so she had me get down so to... interrupt just real quick. So at this mm -hmm. point, mm -hmm. you're thinking something is wrong with me. I'm broken. These headaches are running my life. Like, 
Mm -hmm. Okay. And so exactly. Um, so she was able to get me down to 10 days a month of taking that medication, but all the other days of the month I was taking Valium. So that was under her direction that, okay, I could do, that's how I lived until, um, let's see in the, about June of last year. So June, 2021 is when I was able to stop taking Valium. I haven't taken one since then. Um, and now instead of taking four pills a day, I don't even take four a month. So, and that's with no preventative medicine before I was on Botox until June of last year when I was like, I don't, you know, when I got to the point of learning about TMS and uh, realized I don't need this and it is so painful and so uncomfortable and was then doing injections also monthly that were different that are called CGRPs that are the newest thing in migraine care, but it still, you know, wasn't really preventing them. And I stopped taking that last summer in the US. And when I went home back to Chicago last summer for three months, I experienced three months without a migraine. And I don't know, since they became chronic when I was about 21 or so, I had never, ever experienced three months without a migraine. So fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and now, wow. tell, now tell us what 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 you didn't take and what you felt in order uh -huh. to have and who, and who you found and how yes. first of all, tell us how you found Jeannie, because I think that uh, is, yeah. she knew Jeannie all along. Mm -hmm. But she so, they yeah. hadn't accessed mm -hmm. their mutual problem, did yes. had you? Um, well, Jeannie Cohen is here, so hi, Jeannie. <laughs> and um, it, the reason that it's important to mention that Fulbright is because Jeannie, that's how we met each other um, before we left for uh, our teacher exchange in Mexico. Um, I met her and we've stayed in touch all these years. That was uh, about 16 and a half years ago. And all, you know, along we've known about each other's, you know, her chronic pain and my migraines. And at some point a few years ago, she told me, well, it was maybe uh, about February of 2020 that she said, you know, I was able to heal from my uh, pain and and she was at the point that she couldn't really walk much. We never could go on uh, vacations where you could really walk. We thought about how could she visit me here? It would be the same as like, you know, having a senior citizen relative visit and just do taxis door to door. And she's great now. She's amazing and thriving. Well, and the people who don't know Jeannie, Jeannie healed from um, chronic fatigue syndrome and I think fibromyalgia. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she was also yeah. a teacher and mm -hmm. and she actually felt very stressed by her teaching job where you're just a lot. No, I, I definitely felt stressed oh. by the teaching environment. Oh, okay. Yes. So that's okay. why I preferred not teaching in a school. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So now you're teaching not in a school, but in a, in a different situation. Just like private classes. So both mm -hmm. the careers were important mm -hmm. for both of you to understand how that was what like Rose's pressure. You know, yeah. Like yeah. that was driving. Well, you the yeah, anxiety, got, which was the unhappiness or the, the – go ahead, Rose. Well, it's it's the pressure of being in that teaching community and uh, and the self-criticism, I would imagine, mm -hmm. of being in that so in that community would be um, one of the driving forces, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? For, I um, think for me there were, like, two big factors. One, that uh, perfectionism of wanting to be that teacher that inspired me to become a teacher – and the other is, you know, having to put on a happy face, especially for the children. And I can't even tell you how many horrible things, you know, I taught through. I mean, I taught on 9-11 that happened that morning. And of course, every teacher in the world did. But um, it's just one example of, um, you know, of being, uh, having to just suppress your emotions and put on a happy face the whole day. And in the school I was at, you know, we couldn't say anything about what happened. That was going to be for their parents to tell them when they got home. And so all day just acting like nothing was so different out New of the order. On September 11th. No, Chicago, Chicago. But, Chicago. So, you know, we all, it was a you know. Tuesday. It was a Tuesday. 
I remember it was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday because our schedule was different that yeah. day. Go ahead. So, so that's uh, stress and and just just to you know the stress of uh I mean the fact is that was a, another another part of your life that you like a love hate relationship and that mm -hmm. was a conflict. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look, I, I just have to add that Jeannie has just said she didn't realize how stressful teaching was until she left it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and then she yeah. she commented on pr producing the happy face every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. So I met Jeannie, okay, on the Fulbright. And um, eventually, so I got, uh, I I've looked back at my messages now. So I know there's a message from February 2020, her telling me, about healing from her pain and she and i can laugh about it now but at the time i was completely offended when she suggested that my migraines could be healed by tms by what we know as the mind body syndrome can you rachel tell us why mm -hmm. you were offended if you would wouldn't mm -hmm. mind because this is a very common thing because it's sort of like pointing the finger at you in a way that you know mm -hmm. so just just well, Draw like on that a little bit. Yeah, for myself, it was, you know, my pain is real. It's not going to be, you know, cured by this. It is complicated and that's it. And I had to learn that, yes, of course, the pain is real. All of the pain that we experience is real. But the cause was not this physical thing that obviously that's why no doctors over 20 years could ever figure out what is that physical connection, you know. So um, that's why I was offended. And then, of course, as, as soon as I started to heal, I'm like, I thank Jeannie every day for giving me a life worth living. Because, mm -hmm. as I said, it wasn't, you know. She was a real but, messenger. And it's important mm -hmm. for our, our, our audience to hear that things are never all physical or all psychological. Mm -hmm. There is a physio-psychological cause, and this is now being scientifically researched, that so many conditions or um, medically unexplained symptoms or um, chronic pain or autoimmune disease has such a larger component of psychological cause that we're finding people are healing by addressing that and understanding the connection, like Dr. John Sarna will say, the intimate connection between the mind and the body. And this is what makes sense to every doctor. Right, Rose? Mm -hmm. No doctor will ever deny the intimate connection between the mind and the body, but... But they don't know how to deal with it. Uh, yes. Could I also add, um, you know, in labour, uh, women who have uh, fear around their the labour, they have greater pain. You know, it's all about, I suppose, about fear. And, and, mm -hmm. and the other thing is anticipating the pain. That's mm -hmm. the other component. And, you know, I have a podcast. I'm not sure if I'm able to put it on Facebook, but it says that the mind is expansive, but the body is limited. So the body tries yeah. to accommodate this expansion of the mind and it can't. So it becomes activated in, in, in a way to try and expand them itself to accommodate the mind. But the mind is like human beings have got this ability to go into outer space. You know, the cow can't do it, the horse can't do it, but we can do it. So our minds are just so much more than so just true. our bodies. And of course, when our mind imagines things are going to be bad, they're going to turn out to be bad and they're going to turn out to hurt us or not so much to hurt us, but to but cause that suffering. Yeah. Anyway, that's my little <laughs> bit of so Edition. no, it was really is really is profound. I mean, you, every week Rose and I write another chapter of, of our books, you know. But what I, what I want to get to she does, is, I don't. <laughs> which is which is you know this process just ended. You're saying 2022. 20, 20, so you're saying oh, and that when Jeannie told me about it, it sorry George, a long time. Sorry. <laughs> it took me a while to get into what Jeannie told me. So that's where I have some patients with you know all the tons of people that i see that this could obviously help but i know that it's so hard to get started so it was february 2020 uh that Jeannie told me about it and what she wrote was hey have you read this book have you heard of this book called the great pain deception by steve ozanich um and it wasn't until 
that summer that I started reading it, maybe July. And then it wasn't, I, it didn't get to me right away because 18 months ago in August, uh, 2020, I wrote a blog post that I just recently reread and I don't recognize that person. I can't believe that that was me who wrote it. It's so, uh, you know, I was such a victim. It was my whole identity. It was, um, it was, uh, just, my entire life and you were in pain and you yeah. were suffering and you felt hopeless and that was the expression mm -hmm. you yeah. detailed that blog of all that the, how many needles would go in you with those Botox? 30 every three months that was three needles then the new cgrps you know are miracles for some people but it is the strongest like needle going into either your stomach or your thigh and so no more needles I'm done with that. And I, I don't understand the people that can possibly do Botox for cosmetic reasons. I'm like, it's so not worth it. Um, but uh, so Jeannie told me February 2020 about the book. Around the summer, I started reading it. And by that December, I do remember feeling pretty good when I went home to Chicago. I was able to travel there, Chicago, at, uh, in December 2020. So like the first traveling during the pandemic. Um, but then I went to see my sister in Colorado where it's very high altitude. And I don't know, I, I really think that that had a lot to do with like having migraines and pressure every day. So that kind of reset it. Um, but I had uh, still a great time, just experiences and living. And, um, and again, like, you were, at this point you were taking mm -hmm. medication. Yeah, that was still everything. Um, yeah, that was still everything that I had said. It was, you know, Jeannie was awesome. We, I was taking her breathwork classes. That was helping me slow down. I wish she had them every day. So you got to look up Jeannie's breathwork classes because um, oh, the breath, it's awesome. The breath boss. The, be the breath yes, boss. she is the breathwork boss. Can I just but, make a point? Because breathwork is, mm -hmm. first of all, let's just say that you learn to calm down your mm -hmm. parasympathetic nervous system. You learn to tell us a little bit about what the power of the breath, because it's not just for mm -hmm. Dalai Lama's on the mountain. It is for all of us to use every day to heal. It's scientifically healing us. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that so people can hear how important the breath is. It was just really important to me to be able to slow down and um, it was also awesome. Jeannie's just been such a, like my, uh, my mentor in all of this, that when I first tried it, I was like, this is not for me. And she's like, you got to try anything new three times. <laughs> and by the third time I was hooked and now I'm like, when is your next class? When's your next class? Come on. <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. but what was really great is that she was such a good friend that she knew, okay, now it's time you got to deal with those repressed emotions. And to do that, you need to work with someone else. So she referred me to Jim Prusak, um, who just is amazing physical therapist mm -hmm. um, in California. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's in San Diego, but has most of his clients on online now. And um, so I did like seven weeks, weekly sessions in a row with him starting in the spring of 2021. And by the second, um, by the second session, he was encouraging me to try to stop taking that Valium all those days that I wasn't taking the, um, the trip tans. And I did, I never, I took maybe a half or something in those seven weeks with him. And then I never looked back after those seven weeks in June, 2021. I've never taken one since. Um, so he got me off the meds. How brave is that, Rose? How brave is that? That you it's also, know that yes, that was very them. scary. But her, yeah. but remember that Rachel's self-belief changed so that she didn't need to reach out anymore. She could reach in into her own resources now look draw together how it how jim prusak's work changed mm -hmm. you how your internal workings began to shift mm -hmm. from what's happening outside to what's oh, yeah. happening inside if you know what i mean yes yeah um well jim definitely got me to express like what is going on uh he gave me lots of different tools that you know 
Um, you can say anything you want. This is something that I used to say to my students, like 12 year old kids that, okay, while you can't say that out loud, you can say anything you want in your head. And this is now just like clicking in that this is kind of like, you know, when I'm in a store and get really frustrated, you can say whatever you want right here, you know, but yeah, you have to think it to express it. And what mm -hmm. the most powerful thing that he did is, as soon as I feel pain now, it's okay, what am I feeling? Um, all right, let's talk about today. I was like, okay, I'm nervous. This is the first time I've ever shared my story officially with people I don't know. Um, I'm scared. I don't really know why I'm scared. So let's think about that. Okay. Um, I'm afraid of other people's judgments. Then I think about, you know, what can I control? And all this talk is going on. And then the pain usually starts to dissipate. Um, what's and what is happening? Like, what do you what? So, what's happening? You're accepting your feelings, mm -hmm. you're taking responsibility for your emotions, and there's a calming Ch chat about mm -hmm. that because people uh, they know that intellectually, but if mm -hmm. they go ahead and go to that what seems like a dark, unsafe place, mm -hmm. comes your freedom. Yeah, uh, I think that there's another component which, which um, Rachel has brought out, and it, it, permission to think the thoughts that you think are not okay. I loved it the way you said that. You've got to be disciplined in what you actually say, but in actual fact, your, your freedom to actually think that that person in the shop is, you know, <laughs> slack whatever is fine to think you're not going to harm anyone mm -hmm. and somehow there's this sort of underlying feeling that if you have mm -hmm. a thought about something it's going to actually affect the other person like that they've got radar what would you call it radar and they can read your thoughts now. yeah um anyway, yeah with jim there wasn't i didn't need too much thought behind like why is this working it's just express it talk to yourself, figure out what those emotions are, you know, what's happening that is causing that pain. Um, and, you know, that really helped. Um, it was really exploring. And I still, uh, you know, I went the summer without having a single session with him for three months. And now, you know, I check in. Um, it depends, you know, anywhere from every two to four weeks. And it's, um, you know, I never found therapy that helpful for me. I know it's extremely important somehow to connect with our emotions, but I was never honest in therapy and never really shared those deep feelings. And somehow, thank goodness, you know, Jeannie, Jeannie referred hate, me to the I right hate, person. I, I hate and, to tell you, but you actually did therapy well, with oh, Jim Prusak. Yeah. It's yes. like the way that he does it, the way that coaching works is – um it just works for me a lot better because he gives me uh, feedback a lot more than I ever um, experienced in traditional therapy. But with yeah. Jim, so he gives me a lot of feedback. Yeah, okay. and, and Rose and I also, I think Rose and I would agree on this because Rose has taught me a lot about the safe space that you felt with Jim. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that you, definitely. It, so can, maybe yeah. you can talk about that relationship. Yeah. You had this healthy relationship yeah. or with someone who yeah. you trusted and that helped you mm -hmm. trust something inside of you. Yeah. Well, I think that it stems from getting the referral from Jeannie who I trusted and that he helped Jeannie. Um, and you know, um, this, it just, yeah, somehow, I don't know. He's uh, very, I don't know. I, it's hard to put into words exactly how it's so relaxing. Uh, and empowering and you know that yeah there's a there's a lot of trust there because i can see from you know his facebook page from uh everything that he's done that how many people he has helped and also that he studied with the big names of tms that he had reached out to sarno that he studied from schubiner and um knows all the big names and is always up to date on his research. He's always sharing like the scientific part of it with me that sometimes <laughs> goes over my head a little bit, but um, I appreciate it all. Great. Yeah. Great. It's the reassurance you're talking about as well. 
We, mm -hmm. we definitely. And knowing that he's there. Yeah. Um, and, and as, as Tavis said, it's a safe space that yeah. um, mm -hmm. that exactly. you can be really heard. And that's why, you know, when you said about not having therapy, but in actual fact, oh, you're yeah, having no. therapy on yeah. your body yeah. and your soul. That's true. And you see, mm -hmm. you know, we don't actually talk much about the mm -hmm. soul part of us, but that yeah. soul part of us makes a connection with someone. And that connection actually reframes our 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 ab ability to relate to people, yeah. and it's very it's very important, especially you know if you mm -hmm. think of a teacher having to actually front up in front of a classroom, you know that happened to me once when I was in secondary school. I got sent to look after grade four in the primary <laughs> part of the school because the teacher was sick, and I thought oh, I'll never mm -hmm. be a teacher. I thought <laughs> all those forty kids in front of me. And oh, here am I, 14, yeah. having to keep them in line. Yeah. So I mean, you're a magnificent group of people. A teacher yeah. is an unbelievable. They, they, there's a whole thing about that the God gave the teacher. Like It's like a mother. It's like the mother. It's like this most influential person in people's life. It's a lot of responsibility you took on your shoulders. And then... <laughs> ran a little bit but i like the way that i do it now where i can really make connections you know one-on-one -on -one. great yeah yeah and, and also you know the other thing rachel i find when i do istdp therapy with people they actually reuse it in their own lives and mm -hmm. i'm guessing that the work you do with jim has now mm -hmm. allowed you to see what's going on with you one-on-one -on -one students and when they're not able to grasp something or something's going on you know that their level of anxiety has been raised. Oh yeah, and then so many, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's awesome. No, just, it's, mm -hmm. So many yeah. of my students, the adult students, will actually say like, "Oh, sorry, I'm making this like a therapy session." I'm like, "It's fine, it's fine. Whatever you know, you want to do with your time." But um, yeah, and the, the nice thing, I mean, that's why I asked Jim recently. I'm like is it okay if I just keep touching base like every three or four weeks? Cause I like, I don't want to have like an end or a graduation, no, you know? It's a, it's yeah. a really important relationship that mm -hmm. continues. Rose and I exactly. are very connected to all, all the people we, we work with and there's, because it's, it's a transition in their life. Jim was there for you. Mm -hmm. at that work in oh, the yeah. Room. yeah. Well, theoretically we would say that it's attachment, that the attachment mm -hmm. bond mm -hmm. was deep with Jim and with Jeannie originally, mm -hmm. and the and the injured attachment that you had in your earlier life, whatever that might have been, was actually repaired in your adulthood. And then as you spend time with therapy or, you know, whatever therapy you're using, you then gradually get it longer. Because, mm -hmm. you know, once you're 15 or 16, if you think about it, you, mm -hmm. you're independent from your parents. You're actually mm -hmm. looking at your peers or you're looking at, what your future is and you you're drawing your own uh, old experience into the moment so in actual fact if you think about it from an emotional standpoint you're actually creating that independence now that you mm -hmm. can stand on your own feet and oh yeah you did, and you did that the day you actually mm -hmm. that transition happened the day you you put the um the valium pills in the rubbish mm -hmm. bin so to speak I donated yeah. them, but yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Yeah. I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah. Like that was your transition laugh. period. Yeah. You know, also, Jeannie, when we were talking to you before, you talked about reframing things. Would you help our, mm -hmm. our viewers and our listeners to understand that idea of reframing your world, making your world that it's the same world, but you're looking at it from the back door maybe? rather than the front door. So you're not looking in the parlor, you're looking in the kitchen now of your life. Would you share a little bit about that? Um, Rose, do you oh, remember my... exactly what I might have uh, talked about? You just talked about what the mechanism of what caused the, the headaches, you know, being, being hard on yourself, having mm -hmm. to have a certain oh, yeah. persona publicly, mm -hmm. And then afterwards, having that private persona that says I wasn't good enough, or I should mm -hmm. have, why didn't I? That sort of persona. If you can just sort of draw us around, so that we see that a reframing is important, mm -hmm. and that that's what Jim gave you—that ability to reframe. And Jeannie, of course, gave mm -hmm. you the breath work. And mm -hmm. remember, you needed to have a pause to actually go to that space. 
And the mm -hmm. breath work always gives you that pause. And, mm -hmm. you know, Tova and I always recommend people to learn breathing, whatever the, whatever type of breathing they want to do, it doesn't matter. And it's that extension of the exhale that gives you the, your vasovagal mm -hmm. system a microsecond to um, to recalibrate. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, let's see. So, okay, yeah, just, just reframing, <laughs> that's all. Reframing. reframing. I mean, looking Make at it... things at a different way is extremely uh, helpful and necessary. And, you know, looking at, you know, why would this person say this? Or, um, you know, looking at it from a different way instead of taking things in certain ways. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, how about this? I mean, 100%, no matter what's going on out there, you're responsible for mm -hmm. what flavor, what color, how it hits you, the intensity, the vibration. You're responsible for how you perceive it. And that, that's the reframing. It's like, I'm going to make it work for me, even though I feel mm -hmm. bad or I feel sad or I feel rejected. I'm going to have a healthy relationship with that interaction. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I'd like to answer George's question. He's just talking yeah. too much, this George guy. But first, my uncle George, my uncle George. First, Hi, I'm Uncle George. <laughs> Thank Susie. you, questions. I would like to, uh, Rachel, for you to answer. Susie is new. I've not met Susie before, but welcome, uh, Rachel. Susie, how aware of your mm -hmm. stress, anxiety, etc., were you aware of in the early years of the migraine? Could you tell there was a connection then? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would say that, you know, there was, uh, you know, awareness of being stressed, but not the connection, because I think it just became so uh, the cycle of the fear and the anger and all that was so repressed that and the once the migraines became chronic, I, you know, people would forever be asking, you know, well, what are your triggers, you know, asking uh, and they were everything. It was, yeah, I can't drink alcohol. I can't, and everything that I'm saying I can't do that I couldn't or thought I couldn't, now I can do. I can wow. you know, wow. grow up and enjoy wine or wow. whatever. Um, wow. I couldn't, you know, all these things like until even exertion, like exercise exertion would cause migraines, walking up a flight of stairs, um, all this wow. stuff. So there were so many uh, components that, could possibly be the triggers that there was never it was too uh, like wound up to tell what it was did you think it was something to do with high blood pressure or something mm -mm. did you add a medical cause to it at all because people do that sort of just thing that add a something medical... in the brain just the way that the wires you know don't work okay, I mean, right. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 um but the one of the preventative medications uh preventative was a high blood pressure medicine that drove me crazy every time I went to my uh, internist for a yearly checkup she would say oh and you have high blood pressure and I'd be like no that's the preventative that the neurologist you know prescribed so I was very glad to get off of that one so there's no more confusion um, yeah so I'm going to ask answer some of George's questions mm -hmm. um, so is it TMS that gave you relief or mm -hmm. So yes, it's it, everything is. I feel yeah. like TMS can uh, is definitely what people should be studying, not so much studying, but just learning about. And um, whether it's so the first book I read uh, from Jeannie's recommendation, she and I now agree it's a little bit hard for people to get into as your first it's introduction. Intense, the first book, yeah, yeah. Mosaic is brilliant. It's just in, mm -hmm. it's, it's intense for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'd say one of Sarno's books, Dr. Sarno, who's the father of, uh, you know, TMS, he um, came up with this, has so many brilliant books. Uh, some people I know get hung up on the fact that some of them concentrate on just back pain. And it's like, but it just applies to everything. So, um, it, you know, I was able to read, uh, you know, his books with the title back being in it and get just as much out of it. Um, so yeah. And some of the ways that uh, Jeannie had me learn about TMS at the beginning was um, besides the reading 
Steve Ozanich's books, Sarno's books. There were Dan Bulio's YouTube videos to watch. And I watched those at least one a day for months. Videos, uh, yeah, yeah, his videos on YouTube, Dan Bulio. Um, and uh, let's see, all the podcasts. There are so many great podcasts uh, hosted by a lot of people who have healed from TMS also. Um, too many names to name. <laughs> um, one thing that, that I also found that I love passing on to other people is that 2020 clip of um, uh, when John Stossel did a story. I think it's in the yeah. early 2000s. I love it because you see how powerful uh, the TMS healing was for him. And then what happened to his brother who had the same exact pain, but would not buy I into TMS wouldn't try it wouldn't try it because he was a as he said a medical doctor and this was like I'm not going to just try anything well he had back pain his entire life and unfortunately yeah. you know Tova, uh, Tova could you write that down on the uh, Tova is the only one who can write on the feed Tova yeah. could you write about that 2020 it's 2020 uh, yeah, it's it's on, probably uh, on YouTube yeah. yeah if you just you if you look on YouTube 2020 or no you'll find it. Okay. Um, the other one that rose, you know, intimately was I watched the documentary All the Rage. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that is. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to answer Asiya's. Uh, Asiya, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'm saying you're right, your name right, sweetie, but it's a beautiful name. Ash Ashia or Ashia from Saudi Arabia. Such an amazing, powerful, sweet, wise woman who I met. Here's her question. What was it or what, what was the point which drove you to the transformation the moment you decided accepting rather than rejecting? Hmm. That's a really good question. A great question because I have that first text message from February 2020. I know <laughs> that I wrote a blog post in August 2020 saying everything that I had tried in. And at the end of it, I ended by saying, so if you have any other suggestions, okay, but here's everything I've already tried. Like, you're not gonna, you know, stump me. And honestly, Ooh. it was just little by little, kept reading, kept listening, and everything resonates so much. Once you really read and are open to it, you realize, I think it was really in Steve Ozanich's book, probably that summer of uh, 2020, realizing, when they describe the TMS personality, when they describe, when he describes people with TMS, that was me. It's, you know, somebody who's a perfectionist, a goodist. I want to please people. Um, I hate confrontation. Um, all of the traits that he described. Sounds like, like you're human. Sounds like the human condition. Exactly. It sounds Not like, yeah. it sounds like personal neglect. Could be. To per it, yes, yes. But I do want to say that um, one of John, look, there's, there's some basic things that Rose and I, you know, share with our clients and with our teachings and they're universal laws of nature and they do work when applied, but, and, and they come from some from John Sarno, some from Rose's work with IS, um, TDP, TDP. Anyway, important for me to say that one of John Sarno's seven big tips are if you believe a hundred percent that the cause is psychological and it's being reflected mm -hmm. physically you know you will heal it's like yeah. he's and it's it's we mm -hmm. see this we see people holding on to the and we're not against medical doctors we prefer integrating mm -hmm. i would never tell you to stop taking your medicine integrate medicine and, and psychological but that will show you mm -hmm. prove to you and help you because it is, it is about, look, belief is chemical, hope mm -hmm. is chemical. And um, it is important about how you said about the medication. Like I still um, take that tryptan when I need it. But there's a big it. difference between now needing it and when I thought I needed it, you know, years ago mm -hmm. and was taking four a day. And now it's like. No, first, let me first, let's look at, you know, what's going on. And a lot of times that just does a trick and it, and it seems like a trick and it seems like a miracle and it's so hard to get people to understand this because it's hard to explain what's happening it takes this long to sit and listen so i appreciate everybody who's listening 
Um, yeah. yeah. Could, I, could I also add, you know, Sano said that you have to 100% believe. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's part of the issue um, about self-belief and about self-neglect. And uh, it's all sort of tied in. So anyone watching that doesn't have 100% belief, just know that it's not going to happen just quite so easily as that. It's not just, you know, today I'm going to see it and I'm going to 100% believe because you haven't believed in your own, how would I put it? You haven't believed in your own self anyway. So what's going to make you self-believe that? And and as Rachel said, it's a, sort of like that support from Jeannie. It's that support from Jim. It's that that says, yes, I can fully believe that I'm healable or that I'm well. Would you agree, Jeannie, that that's a, Rachel. a normal, a normal, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah. I, yes, think, uh, yeah, that that's very important. And um, I think when Tova was mentioning Sarno's like, kind of commandments uh those were really important uh number one i think was move i've got his bible right here my bible which <laughs> has back pain in the title but you know it it's the same works. isn't it and yeah actually rose i meant to say that i think it's remarkable all the people that can just read his books and feel you know and feel better they don't need to go it beyond that. It doesn't mean, and it's very important good point because we had on our Hebrew show two people. One had healed from the book. Another mm -hmm. is on a healing journey for his life. And mm -hmm. it's a personality thing. It's a, it's a, it's a it, into it. It's a it, knowing yourself, and it's not good or bad. Mm -hmm. Everybody will have their own healing journey. The woman who healed from yeah. the book is still on her healing journey. It just isn't with back pain. It's other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is another point that's really interesting is how things move around once once the migraines like started to vanish in like I'd say June 2020 I'm like emailing Jim in a panic like I've got this tingling in my fingers or, or I had horrible itching all over my body and what I knew was okay do not go to the pharmacy it's not physical it's just you know once you start to heal it moves around. Then I had anxiety for like two days, like not like terrible, where I, I just felt so horrible. And you know, he says, just stick with it. You're okay. And you it's see the seeds of the land are up. You just mm -hmm. throw for a minute. So mm -hmm. you oh. you, so could I, you could I make it? Oh, sorry. The message. The, the symptoms are a message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like I'm, I, it's still trying to. Yeah, exactly. It's still yeah. those. Uh, emotions are still trying to come out, you know, sideways, you know, in all these different ways. They're, they were expressed as migraines and they were being expressed, you know, as that itching, then expressed as this. And now it's like, no, let's just express the emotions. How about that? You know, <laughs> let's try that. <laughs> and actually, one of the things that um, Jeannie had told me about was Nicole Sachs's approach with journal speak. And with Jim, he also supports that. And it's, I find it so helpful. It's amazing to just write down your real, real emotions. And then I like her way of just rip it up because you do, it's not something you want to look at again. It's not something you want anybody else to see. And sometimes that's really powerful. So <laughs> there's so many different ways to get help and, and they don't work for yourself. everybody but there's right they, that's why there's so work. many different ways it I think will that. work when you mm -hmm. like nicole came on our show and said people are journaling all the time but most of the time they're they're lying to themselves you have to yeah. tell the truth <laughs> yeah that's a big thing yeah saying the ugliest things that yeah that's why you want to rip it up that's <laughs> but um rose, some of, rose, mm -hmm. rose you're going to say something before i interrupted Rose? No, it's fine. It's okay. okay. Could I okay. could I just add that The Lies We Tell Ourselves is just a wonderful oh, book as well. Amazing book. By, um, by uh, John Fredrickson. And, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. oh, there we are. Actually, put it on the side, Tova, because, oh. yeah, In how to chat. face the truth, accept yourself, and create a better life. Yes. It's a, re it's a really good book because we tell ourselves these lies all the time. I also want to buy to put, call to mind any 
therapists or coaches or anything that are actually also watching us that all of this is is revolved around attachment theory and it's an important understanding when you're helping patients to see that if you've got a mindset about attachment theory you've also got a, an extra added way of helping your patient of drawing on that understanding of how attachment works and didn't work to actually help your patient heal so just a little clinical note there. You know, like yeah. we're not, you know, family members come on the show, and I see your cheerleaders are all of Jeannie's family members and your uncle. <laughs> and we're not here to bash families. Rose and I are grandmothers. We what are, are you know, in our third generation. Are you about bashing families? I'm just saying, like, because, because we're talking I understand about what you're saying. When I, when I think of attachment, I think, well, what happened to me as a kid? What happened to me as a child? So this is, this is, it's a brilliant understanding that our parents do the best they can. We have a perception of, of, of growing up. And you know, Gabriel Mate is making all this balagan, which is a word in Hebrew, mess about trauma. It's great, and it's great work and we're learning a lot, but we're not here to blame our presidents, to blame our parents. We're here to accept, right, Rose? <laughs> she looks Where did that come from? Because um, of attachment theory, the attachment right? Theory. The first thing I think of, and what do you think of, Rachel? That, you yeah, think yeah. Something happened as a kid. Yeah. So, so tell us. So well, then we want to express to mom and dad watching. It's not your fault. You didn't right. cause my migraines. Right. It's uh, you know. No, it's our understanding of ourselves that causes the migraines. Right. Yes. Which and is that's her, a big it, one, Rose. That's a big thing for people to be. What? What do you mean? But my mother was this. My father was this. Like this is also people no, hear the word that, trauma, they automatically want to blame somebody. <laughs> that's what I mean. What? So we shouldn't talk about the fact that as as little kids we were afraid. We were afraid to tell our parents that we were bullied. We were afraid to tell the teacher that they were, you know, tell our parents that our teacher was mean. We were afraid to do that. We shouldn't talk about that. Is that what you're saying? We should keep quiet? No, that we should not blame anybody. We should under, try to understand the relationship. Okay. So, 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 Mary, so, so you saying that Bulby and that were, what are you saying about no, the people that realized about amazing. attachment theory? I, what, Sorry? But, but sometimes the first thing I think of, yeah, you know, what I thought of when I first learned it was, well, what did my parents do wrong or can i blame mm -hmm. them or what did they, did they hurt me like i didn't understand it when i first heard it personally that's why i brought that up yeah i think it's good for the audience to know for those watching like you know it's not what somebody else did it's everybody's yeah. life experience i, I was so. i was addressing clinicians right mm. to have an understanding of attachment theory when they're working with patients with chronic pain Mm -hmm. And now it's sort of become a blaming game, but it's not about blaming no. because because there's such a thing as intergenerational trauma mm -hmm. and we do it without realising. Definitely. And once we're healed, we can spot it in ourselves and we can spot it in other people. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a wonderful way of understanding human beings. That's all. Mm -hmm. it's really, really a good point, Rose. Okay, mm -hmm. I know. Back George, George wants mm -hmm. to know, has George got back pain? Have you got back pain, George? All the sayers have back pain. <laughs> oh, something something uh, um, genetic? Exactly. That's why I'm very excited. It's that called intergenerational my, trauma, yes. isn't it? Well, yeah. I'm very excited that the sayers are open enough to be here. Oh, how lovely. Mm -hmm. How beautiful. Look, if I could just point out to the sayers, that, you know, you've heard about Atlas holding the world. So when we hold the world, you know, remember Atlas and he's sort of got his knees bent as he's trying to hold the world and he's he's using his back to hold the world. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So um, one thing about uh, the book is Sarno's principles again, his principles, his commandments, um, and how, like when people want answers of, so how did you get better? I think following his do's and don'ts were really important. Like what it says at the very beginning of the book is worth the book alone of number one of resuming physical activity. So I think that was one thing where I said, 
oh, I couldn't even walk up a flight of stairs. Like I always would make sure I lived in a building with an elevator because, wow. you know, what if my head hurts a little bit, then if I take the stairs, it's going to get worse. Wow. No. But so then it's not just going to the gym now. Oh my God, this trainer that I have now has me doing things that are shaking my brain and making me work so hard. I'm like, he has no idea. Like, he knows how old I am, but I feel like he treats me like I'm 20 years younger. And it's amazing what I can do and what I would be so afraid to try to do before. So movement was number one. Um, then his his number two is talk to your brain, which is what I explained how Jim really explained to me how to make that happen, how to do that. And I told you both that last week I had been um, talking to myself as I was biking to my class and I had a little bit of pain and I was like, ah, just, you know, leave me alone, God. And <laughs> I had a mask on and was glad that I still wear a mask because there was somebody right behind me and I'm going like, just leave me alone already, you know, to my pain. Uh, oh, okay. So talking to your brain, maybe not always out loud. Um, and then the, his number three was stopping physical treatment. So when I told the doctor, I don't want to do Botox anymore. And she kind of almost tried to scare me into doing it, saying that 90% of patients who stop it get worse. Wow. Like, well, I guess I'll be that That's other That's the 10%. last thing you want to hear, isn't it? How brave yeah. is that? How brave yeah. is that? Trusting your body, trusting yeah. your ability to be your own doctor, your own therapist, your own placebo, your own mm -hmm. medicine. You're telling yeah. us about how you changed the chemical makeup of your nervous system and your blood system. You changed the chemical flow of what was going on. Amazing. And the last guest you had on, as you were saying, uh, you had reiterated to me that she said that that pain, that chemical flow, that that's an emotion, right? Well, yes. the, 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 um, the pain. Scientist, um, Bethany. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. emotion. Pain is um, processed in the brain in the same place that fear is and anger is. They study this. And it is just about a matter of time before more and more people will be saying that pain is just another an emotion. And it reflects itself in our body because we haven't noticed the anxiety before the pain. And once we notice that, so you notice the anxiety now. Now, you, yeah. That goes back to Susie's question where I did not notice any connections before. It was too could much I, of a cycle. Mm -hmm. Sorry, could I just point, point out that I love watching little children and I notice that if the little child falls over and maybe grazes their knee or whatever, they'll pick themselves up mm -hmm. and they'll hop back on their bicycle and they'll ignore mm -hmm. the feeling. But if mummy is around or daddy is around, mm -hmm. the tears will come and they need comforting. And mm -hmm. I think it's very, very interesting mm -hmm. that, you know, pain is actually an emotion. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it sort of speaks it so strongly when you see that little child, that one minute they've grazed their knee, but they're back on their bicycle. But the next time they graze their knee mm -hmm. and mummy or daddy is around, tears will come, need a hug, need care. And it's right. just so beautiful that, 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 you know, that interconnectedness with our attachment, and that's right. why attachment theory is so important, to yeah. see how it operates. So, yeah, I just want to share that. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to, Cheryl always joins us. She's in living in Queensland, Queensland in, in near uh, Rose, and she, she healed from every itis you can name. Mm -hmm. She had it, and I'll say this on record that my – opinion and my research is telling me that migraines are an inflammatory response as well and most diseases do have an inflammatory connection so when you heal from all the itises you like the migraines you're on that path so cheryl is sharing with us um early in the morning about um patterns passed down and seeing that in your parents behavior was their patterns and upbringing that's all they knew, but sometimes you can't see. So she had oh, some amazing healing through understanding her relationship with her parents. And um, thanks, Cheryl. Always love when you share. Susie is quite, has another question mm -hmm. or comment. 
-hmm. I did either when I she had did, migraine. Yeah. Did you know Susie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. She yeah. <laughs> <laughs> noticed that her headaches came at certain times. I mean, that's rather typical. You know, like Rose and I once did a special show about um, before the holidays, how to deal with your family. And we weren't saying your family. Right back. I was frozen. <laughs> yes. Oh, you're back. A relationship. It's about a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, so thank you for that, Susie. It's always important to talk about that. Um, I think that might be it. A lot of people are watching. Does anyone else have any questions for Rachel? Um, <laughs> and Rachel's also... Um, usually after our show, if anybody wants to ask questions or talk to our guest, Rachel's a, a, a member of our okay. Facebook page. Also, in in saying that, Tova, remember mm -hmm. Rachel's bilingual. Oh, so right. Good anyone, point. Good point. Yeah. Spanish and English. Mm -hmm. Fluent. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Um, we do have um, I member once asking Talk, like, it's true, we get calls from French people or from French citizens or Spanish citizens and um, they want a therapist in in Spanish or French or the movies, you know. So speaking of, um, the the Sarna movie is in 30, no, this, the Sarna book is in 30 languages mm -hmm. and the movie was being shown in 80 different countries at one point, the All the Rage movie. Mm -hmm. How, how that, did, did that help you? All the rage movie when you saw I, it? yeah and well mostly i had seen it um maybe in the after i uh, met jim when i was already feeling much better what i think it does is help show people who uh don't know about tms or like you know exactly the power of uh how it works and sarno's work since he in the film goes to sarno's office it's amazing Reminds me a little of Elvis because John Sarno is so popular now and amazing doctors took his his method and he's being on like it took it and started the the psychophysiological disorders association, which Rose and I use a lot for our bibliographies and for our research. And there's enormous amount of information. If anybody wants to know the science behind this, we're not we're not selling woo woo. We're selling science. We're selling the the art and the science of the human body, the ability to heal itself. And that's my flag. I'm flying. <laughs> um, Jessica Beer, Beer says thank you. Jessica. Yeah. And Cheryl's talking about her tension headaches. Another, another, I will, I will talk, I will mention her point. When my tension headaches first came, she noted that her emotions were coming up. And as she followed through the last part, uh, she was allowing them to pass through her head and she got well I'll, I'll anyway i'll let you read this it's a little bit confusing for me anyway um she talked about forgiveness mm -hmm. yeah it's forgiveness important stuff. to keep reading mm -hmm. yeah once i had yep. the forgiveness it was like a balloon Allow the burst and the pressure released yes really important mm -hmm. it's been an amazing amazing resource for us yeah. so any more questions out there before we say good night um, Rachel, good morning to you in Australia. Good <laughs> what was that? Good morning to you in Australia. That's right. Yes. Yes. I I yeah. well, you know, if you if you were, I mean, you are an inspiration. I mean, we we have doctors on and therapists and movie directors and amazing people, but it's something very oh, special okay. what, when we, we well, meet. have a look at what Aisha just said. Yes. I'm going to say hello, hello, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing with us. You inspired us to start, but I'm afraid of the back off or stopping at the middle of the journey. Have you had such weakness? Oh, in I, no. um, I wouldn't say backing off or stopping. I just kept going like something's not working here. So I got to keep going. Like after those three months of no migraines in the U.S., then... Um, you know, I came back to reality here, life started again. And, um, and yeah, it was scary getting that first migraine again. And 
Um, but it's okay. So what do I need to do now? Get back in touch with Jim, talk to Jeannie, uh, make sure I'm taking the breathwork classes whenever I can. Just so many, you know, watch Dan's videos. I find those really helpful. Uh, listening to Jim on different podcasts, uh, hearing just his voice and being able to carry him around and listen. Uh, there's so many things to do that I wouldn't be afraid of getting uh, stuck, you know, on that journey. It's a journey. That's what I've had to learn is that um, that it, it is it's still sad and scary when I get a migraine, but I know that, you know, tomorrow I'm going to feel great. I'm going to wake up. And the most amazing thing is to wake up and not feel a twinge of pain. And that's going to be tomorrow. And if, you um, did, and if you did wake up and the pain was there. Yeah. Well, you know, then there is, you know, the last resources if it is that bad. But there's so many ways now that, you know, to that I've been able to it. prevent it. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Asha, could I also add that if you're on this journey and you pause or you don't believe it's true, you've actually learned something in the period of time that you've read or heard or listened or whatever, and that it doesn't go away. And and sometimes disbelief or whatever you want to call it is going to come up, and that's fair enough. It's fair enough. And, you know, that journey, as Rachel says, you know, it, if you stop it or it, you pause it, it's not really going to take away any of the whatever you've discovered. And, and you know, Tofa and I often sort of talk about the fact that when the, when the student is ready, the teacher arrives. And I think it's such an important thing for people to remember that if they're turned off by the idea of Sano, they've heard about it. And when they're ready to want to discover more, the teacher will show up or they'll... they'll source the teacher so and I, and I want to summarize something that you said um rachel tonight that uh we're, we're we live in a medical model and it's a wonderful medical model it's done a lot of amazing things in our world as we live in it and we have a certain way that we we trust doctors and we listen to them and we don't listen to ourselves and there is a voice a doctor inside there is wisdom inside and learning and practicing and reading this is all really important but the way you applied the wisdom and that's what i want to share with people when we apply it to our lives in our most stressful moments not in yoga on a yoga mat or at, on a vacation in our most stressful moments sometimes at christmas dinner you know on a first date in school when you're teaching in front of children this is the time opportunity for us to apply and see that we can manage and take care of ourselves. And I know that the medical system doesn't support that in a way, okay. but you're saying add, it can be done. Add the breath, add the breath to that Tova now, and, and then you've got you've yes. got your starting point. Yes. And and believing in your ability and your breath. So much healing in the breath. So mm -hmm. much healing in the breath. Anyway, mm. Jokey Fern, I don't know you, but I'm happy that you're here. Is that a oh, Hovi. Hovi is a friend also. Hovi, She's... wonderful. Yeah. From new faces. Yeah. I love uh, uh, Kelly comes to visit many to often, and he helped us with a couple of links. He put the link up for mm -hmm. um, the for the 2020. Mm -hmm. And he put the link up. He actually put a couple more links up. And Kelly, I didn't know that you deal with migraines. Thanks for sharing that. Rose and I are here to help you on your healing journey. I mean, the healing is there, and there's so much information on the internet, and our, you know, our resources from our YouTubes and us. I mean, and if anybody ever wants to have a complimentary consult with Rose and I, we we love to help people on their healing journey, and um, uh, we must keep breathing. Says Jovi, that's a beautiful name. Jovi, Jovi, Jovi is Jovi is from Spain. Lives Beautiful. in the U.S. and is a doctor who totally understands TMS. He he, he, he she, she she is saying we must keep breathing. Yeah. That's amazing. yes, Con yeah. conscious breathing though, not unconscious, breathing. not the con conscious breathing, but the conscious breathing that allows that space, that that actual physical space in our vasovagal system to calm, 
And that's the beauty about the breath. There's also another area that I'm very interested in, but I haven't been able to follow up. And that's the, the role of myelin, because myelin is in our upper body and it's unmyelinated in our lower body. Now, I don't know how that correlates, but I do know from our, our, our meeting with um, 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 Bethany, Bethany Rains, Dr. Rains, um, how important the, the myelin is in our in our grey matter in our brain and our myelin is thickened if we've had early childhood trauma our myelin believe it or not is thickened in the brain and now they're looking at how to maybe unthicken it or whatever but apparently that's to build resist uh, resilience probably within within the um yes, within it's, the it's brain like to cope but that again ends up with chronic pain so yeah. just yeah. it's so complicated and it's so interesting yeah. and it's simple in a way it's so simple and yet it's so complicated yeah anyway i, <laughs> I love it paradox. that's the paradox yeah. well it's yeah. been so inspiring thank um, you so much for having me yeah you need it's to, you need to follow up on that blog you need to follow up on that blog yes yes okay <laughs> Within the next week, there will be the follow-up there. I said it. Well, it'll we'll happen now. Send it out on our, on our oh, page wow. and our Instagram. Um, anyway, and thanks for inviting all these wonderful people to our TMS Roundtable. We are here every Monday night, Tuesday morning. Rose is my hero for getting up early. <laughs> the clock's change in Australia. She's going to be getting up earlier. Oh. And we, we, we'd love to, we'd love to, I'll say this out loud because it's a little bit of, you know, angst in... We'd love to be streaming live at nighttime at the best time for the world that everybody could come on and join live and interact and get questions answered and be involved in the show. And it's just, um, you know, maybe we'll have, fran my dream was to have franchises of TMS Roundtable, like TMS Roundtable Barcelona, TMS <laughs> Roundtable Chicago. I mean, why not? It's, it's the future and um, now that we're virtual, that people can, and, and we are so virtual. That's why I love this live show. I feel like we're with these people. So that's what we love about the um, the Facebook Be Live. And, and um, oh, Jeannie, you're such an amazing cheerleader. <laughs> you are amazing. She, <laughs> she really is. So any questions, any, we, we're here for you. Rose is um, available today. And, <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> And Rachel's here, and we're and all. And Uncle George will talk about the migraines. <laughs> you can email me. Okay. Uh, Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All Thank the best. you, everyone. Be Thank well. you for participating. Hopefully, in this.